We spoke a little bit about the safety of Reverend Lawson, but I want to talk about some of the challenges we, some other challenges we faced in the early years of the church. So I remember uh, during the years of civil rights, we were a, uh, first off, Houston was a little bit of a hot. Um, there was a lot of chaos around um, the fear of white recrimination for the efforts to desegregate HISD, uh, buses, businesses, all the rest of it. Um, my dad, our dad was very involved with um, SELC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which was the organization underneath um, Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, leadership. We were very involved with the community because we were right here between these two large colleges. Um, and so you had young people that were involved at SNCC and young people that were involved in the Black Panther Party. And all of that really was kind of reverberating right around our church. Uh, our campus, the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church campus, was kind of command central, frankly, for the civil rights era. Um, and so you had young people that would have meetings here, and this is where, you know, uh, 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 the, the noise making that really occurred in Houston. Uh, as the church was concerned about our dad, they were also innervated by the fact that we weren't going to sit still and let Houston remain a kind of backwoods, um, you know, old, good old boy kind of network, that there was going to be change. Uh, one of the things that happened during that time was he and others helped to desegregate businesses. And so when the when the um, uh, Foley's and the Sackowitz's and the Joskies finally opened their doors for black shoppers, it was directly as a result of that kind of leadership from our church. And not us alone. It wasn't just Wheeler Avenue, but it was Wheeler Avenue as the kind of leadership team. And And what happened for our congregation was we prayed through that because there was fear. You know, the, the, the house in our, that we lived in was burned. There were families that were, you know, ostracized in their communities. There was challenge, but God took care of us and we were able to come through that. And now we get to say, oh, look at what happened and look at how impactful it was. But during those years, it was scary. And without prayer, without the support of a congregation, we would perhaps be in a very different place. And some of the best people to tell that story are the charter chicks and the other charter members, because they were, they were terrified a lot of the time uh, for not only my dad, but for so many of them who were involved. But they stood behind him. Every single chance they got, they stood behind him. I remember uh, going to marches with dad uh, because in so many cases, he needed the students and that was from all ages to be a part of a movement that he was trying to make happen at that point. Um, and so that was a really important part. One of the first words we learned how to spell since we had to make up signs was desegregate. <laughs> so can you imagine a bunch of little kids spelling out desegregate on the sign? But, uh, but it was really important and it was a message that we got to see. And what I vaguely remember about some of those marches uh, is the hostility that we faced from whites. They would sort of line the streets as we were marching downtown to City Hall. Uh, and they would yell, you know, foul things at us. Um, but everybody was pretty centered on where we were going. And so we didn't let that bother us. And I say we, I was too little to really um, make decisions like that. But I did see that if he wasn't afraid and the other young people we were walking with wasn't afraid, then perhaps I just needed to, you know, keep myself prayed up and keep marching. From my first year being here to now, I'm noticing there are a lot more races coming to our congregation. How does that make you feel, you know, being a part of the civil rights time in the beginning of the years of the church and now like, you have to feel some type of pride? Like, how do you feel? I love it. It, it, you will. it just shows the uh, inclusivity of the church and the growth that has resulted as a, you know, because of it. Um, yes, we were totally African American in the beginning, or at least from my early, earliest memories. And as more races are coming through and joining and bringing their children and growing their families here at the church, it's a beautiful experience. 
Well, and I'll be honest, it's actually been there since the beginning. Mm. Even during the civil rights movement, uh, there are a number of whites who were involved with that. Um, we've always had a close relationship with the Jewish community in this city. And there were people who would, whether or not they joined, but who would come to service fairly regularly. And we didn't think anything of it. In fact, that was just part of our world at that point. You know, COVID is a blessing and a, and a, and a, and a, and a challenge at the same time. Um, because of the fact that we had to shut down and we ended up with a completely online ministry, it opened the church up to people that in other you know, cities, countries, you know, states, states wouldn't have known of us. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a delight when pastor on a Sunday morning will say, oh, I've got a wheel around a person from you know, Kentucky or Tennessee or Washington or Canada or wherever they come from. I mean, it is a blessing. And I was a member years ago of a church in New York called Abyssinian, and they used to always every Sunday ask, where is the Lord? You know, where are you from? Where are you from? Because so many people would come through these sort of famous congregations. Well, Wheeler is now a famous congregation, yeah. and we have achieved that, not because we weren't doing amazing things before COVID, but because COVID gave visibility to so many people. And so what I'm feeling, and I met with a young man yesterday who's 83, and he's been a regular member of Wheeler for several months. He said, I got to that church and I just can't leave. I just love it so much. It just makes me so happy. And I think that that's a real testimony to the great work of our leadership, the great work of our ministry teams, the great work of all the volunteers. You know, one of my favorite things about New Year's this year was him celebrating all of those volunteers who come in, in first touches and courtesy corps and the people that do the sign language and all of those things because they help to bring in the congregation. And I think that that's important. Even the work of communication score, you know, we, we can't our <laughs> work without you guys. Yeah, and um, you all are critical as a matter. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah.